Merry Christmas. I'm Jody Pritzel, author of Immigrants, Ornaments, and Legacies, a story of American-made glass Christmas ornaments and vintage American-made glass Christmas ornaments. Thanks for buying my books. And you might have read about Corning having the most popular color bulb in the 1950s and 60s. The most popular pop, most popular bulb was blue, and it's because of what you see behind me here. I'm at the Manitowoc Public Library, part of the Evergleams on 8th Street exhibit in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. Now here's where the interesting part of the story comes in. If not for Manitowoc and the Aluminum Specialty Company, there would have been nothing for Charlie Brown to have criticized in that special, right? You can get any other tree you want, just not make it aluminum or pink. The exhibit on the 8th on 8th Evergleams on 8th has at least 38 trees behind me and then in each one of the businesses there are more aluminum Christmas trees but let's take a step back and talk about the colors the sizes and the different styles of aluminum Christmas trees so the year was 1959 with the aluminum specialty company of Manitowoc Wisconsin Richard Thompson Wes Martin developed the ingenious design. Each branch was the same size and there was one hole and it was one branch per one hole and even a kid could put together this design. They sold like hotcakes. Jerry was the star salesman and across the country everyone wanted this new 1960s cosmic design. Aluminum Specialty Company branded their tree Evergleam in 1960. It had a good 12-year run from 1959 to 1971. In fact, six or seven of every ten aluminum Christmas trees in the United States sold were made by the Aluminum Specialty Company right here in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. So that's the cool reason why there's Evergleams on 8th every year so that the trees are displayed and everyone can appreciate the history in Manitowoc, Wisconsin and the aluminum Christmas tree. Some parts of them are handmade. There were machines that, so what I have what I understand is there were winding machines that the girls ran. They were basically assembled out of sewing machine parts and they would slather some hot glue onto an aluminum rod and position the rod, grab some of the aluminum fringe needle and run the motor and draw the aluminum fringe needles down that rod. Secure it with a piece of tape at the bottom, move on to the next. Um, and so an Evergleam uh, nomenclature, if you will, the, the term pom-pom, which you hear commonly, common colloquialism, is not used whatsoever. The, it was used in other brands, but not by a specialty for their trees. So this type of branch tip is called a fountain tip. And you can see there are differences even between fountains. And so you have like your typical fountain tip over here. This tree down here is actually uh, what's referred to as a promo uh, long needle fountain. So it's a promotional tree. It has 30 needles that are 33% longer than the average tree uh, and fewer branches. So it was a way to cut cost and make the tree a little bit more affordable in the same height class. Um, that's a very kind of, that's an odd model that you're looking at there. That's actually a three foot tree. Um, so typically um, the trees were made in two, four, six, seven, and eight foot sizes. A three foot tree was made um, in a couple of different styles, but they're fairly rare. And that's so. a straight needle. That's a straight needle tree, and that's actually a, a very rare, uh, what's called a frosty pine. Um, so another sales gimmick that they came up with uh, was to create this frosty finish on the needles. So that aluminum is actually embossed, it's stamped with a pattern to give it this kind of icy appearance as opposed to this little guy down here. This is the normal finish on the needle. That's what you typically see. Um, and 
most commonly the frosty finish was applied to uh, a fountain tree. So you'll usually see a frosty fountain. If you come across one in the wild or on eBay, it's usually a frosty fountain. Um, but they did make a straight needle version of the frosty tree and that is what you're seeing there. That's the frosty pine. So I'm here with Jonathan at Quilting in the Valley. And he's going to have the sound of what it sounds like to take out one of the evergreen branches. It's like a magic trick. Like a magic trick, Jonathan. And he's assembling two of the evergreen trees that you could see if you were seeing Evergleams on 8th here in Manitowoc. The trunks, um, it, uh, I've never seen a photograph of it, but I've talked to people who actually worked with the machine, who worked on the line and, and used that machine, and apparently you would feed the dowel into the machine and it would drill all the holes at once, at every angle, and then pass it off out of the machine and then you feed in the next. So it was very fast. Um, so also not really handmade. One of the biggest problems with uh, uh, creating the trees, what I've heard, is that um, the, the drill machine that drilled the poles, that drilled the holes in the trunks, um, would break constantly. You, you were constantly breaking drill bits. And I can see that because I've drilled, I have an apparatus that I created at my house to drill poles. At and drill the holes at different angles. And when you get to those very extreme angles at the top of the trunk, it's really difficult to get your drill bit in and not have it wiggle around and break on you. So I can see why that would happen all the time. So this, this particular tree, and remember, a lot of these trees are donated, or they're actually put up by the collectors in the area. Some people have 200 trees, some people have four. But this one in particular really grabs my attention because the trunk, oops, don't touch it. The trunk cellophane is perfectly intact. And that shows how much love, because remember, they only made from 1959 to 1971. I just want you to see the difference in the trunks. This is an aluminum Christmas tree manufactured by Miro. You can see that it has the collared, the collared sections on it. And when you look at this Evergleam tree, you can see how it's one hole, one branch. So how you can tell an aluminum specialty company tree from a Miro aluminum Christmas tree is all in the trunks. So this is an original ever gleams color wheel kind of the stand and the light are original but it would have come with a cellophane top so the color wheel itself with the colors on it has been replaced but who cares who cares right because look at the effect you get and this is in the daylight there goes blue green oh red and one more yellow The aluminum specialty company was the market leader with 20 other competitors later on in the 1950s and 1960s. When the Evergleam brand was born in 1960, the popular color was silver due to the aluminum specialty company's expertise in that technology. Over time, they added the rare pink tree, the gold tree, the green tree, the blue tip tree, about 25% of the aluminum specialty company's trees that were sold were about uh, these different colors. Six or seven out of every 10 aluminum trees sold though was made by the aluminum specialty company here in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. You know, it was, it was designed to stand up against a wall and not take up space. Um, and, you know, at the time, a lot of people had, they were living in ranch houses that didn't have a lot of space. And so, you know, this was kind of the answer to that. But 
it didn't go over that well. So what year? Um, that, that would have been, I think, sixty-one. Sixty-one. Because the item numbers for the peacock tree um, were duplicated later on. So the, it's a forty-seven oh seven for like the big one, and that number got reused later um, on a frosty finish. Yeah, so these are these are original bows. These are the bows that came with this tree. They're made out of a uh, red sashing ribbon. Uh, it's, it has to be sashing. It's this kind of interesting blend or material between paper and fabric. Uh, it's very unique, but it was made by the 3M Corporation. Sashing is no longer manufactured by them. Um, so if you want to recreate these these bows, with that ribbon you have to find new old stock ribbon um, and you also need to have a sashing bow making machine which we have one over here uh, so this is the bow machine and you can see the way that it works is you um, you load this pin into the end here and then the you turn this and this pushes the ribbon onto the bottom of the bow pin and the pin holds the bow together. Um, and then you, when you're finished, you cut the ribbon and pop it off. Now here's the crazy thing. I know I've seen this box with the three dozen corning glass ornaments in it before, but here it is on display at Evergleams on 8th and you can see it came with a four foot aluminum tree. So did Corning get into the craze too, along with Noma and Craft House and Miro and Aluminum Specialty Company? I mean, who didn't get into this cosmic craze of the 1960s? Well, so Aluminum Specialty had deals with many other manufacturers at the time. Um, and so they had a deal with Corning. They would send trees. So that tree is an Evergleam and they would send trees to Corning, they would package it with the ornaments and send it out, um, you know, as a combo. And uh, I wonder if Fran has some on. This guy down here, this Armor Star, that's a ham display tree. So you got a promotional tree with your ham. Um, Aluminum Specialty had a deal with Noma. Um, so you'll find occasionally, um, Aluminum, aluminum trees that say Noma on the box. The box, other than the Noma brand name, is identical to an Evergreen box, and the tree is an Evergreen. It was made by Aluminum Specialty, sent to Noma for their branding, and sold by them. Um, what's the other one I'm thinking of? Craft House. Uh, Craft House had to deal with them as well early on. Um, aluminum Specialty sent them. Um, sort of budget model trees. They were lower branch counts for their height classes and sold under the Craft House name. And then Craft House, uh, once they moved on to their Fairyland line, um, which you'll see for sale somewhat frequently, um, that was then, I don't know if they made those trees or they partnered with a different um, manufacturer at that point. Okay, we're at Evergreen's on 8th, and I'm here with Kathy Carl of Hardin Homestead. She's going to tell us about her Evergreen with vintage Christmas ornaments, some American and some German. German. Yeah. Yep. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm, what I have here is a rotating 7-foot Evergreen. Um, as you can see, it has the rotating stem, but it's not an original vintage one because they do make these yet. So we just take the newer ones because of the better um, quality wiring. Um, typically, when you go through our event, Evergleams on 8th, most of the trees are not decorated because the collectors take a lot of time. Um, if you'll notice, the ends of my branches are kind of <laughs> scrunched up and inside. That's what happens when you put your ornaments on there because if you don't have a long enough hook, they'll get kind of damaged. So what a lot of the collectors do is they sit down and they straighten each one of those out. So if you look at other ones oh. that are pristine, this is why the ornaments don't go on there. Oh, wow. But the ones that you do see with the ornaments are usually the collector's own trees and their own ornaments. So that's why we do that. Super. How long have you been involved with your event? 
Um, I was one of the original ones. Um, Steve Sear, who was the guy, the original collector, had about 200 trees. He thought this would be a great idea. He's originally from Manitowoc, doesn't live here anymore. He lives in the Madison area. So he came up to me because I just happened to be the president of the Downtown Association in 2015 when he had this great idea. And I said, let's go for it. What the heck? If you're doing all the work, what do we have to lose? <laughs> so <laughs> so really, that's when it started. Yeah. And everybody can come out basically mid-November to January, early January. Yeah, it starts year. Thanksgiving Eve is when our oh. deadline is to get them up. And then the lights all are on all through town. And then through January 7th, which is the first Sunday after New Year's Day. Okay, great. So the, the record sale was set this past week, uh, I believe. Um, it was a four foot model. Um, it's an Evergleam, very rare. Um, only uh, five models are known to exist, uh, at least at my last count. I might be missing one or two there, but um, it's a dual color tree. It's referred to as the blue burgundy and um, it, it was a pristine model. I mean, it was gorgeous. It was not missing a branch. It had a box. It was complete. Everything was there. It looked like it had never been touched. Um, sold at auction on eBay for over just over 17000 So that <laughs> that's the record. I also saw another record-breaking tree um, this last Friday. Uh, it was a six-foot blue frost, and normally you don't see them sell for quite that high but um this one sold for nearly twelve thousand so they're they're jumping in value significantly so this is a rare 14 foot evergleam tree that i'm standing in front of i want to go out of my way to thank the collectors and i'm going to read their names because i don't want to miss anyone that helped create the evergleams on eighth exhibit here in downtown Manitowoc and at the Manitowoc Public Library. Barb, Jordan, Kathy, Steve, Fran, Theron, and Colton. And I also wanna share some other resources with you. Three books for you to pick up. Julie Lindemann and John Chimans, Seasons Gleamings, The Art of the Aluminum Christmas Tree. And then Theron George's, who actually has, he's donated some of his trees to the exhibit, for I guess loaned is the right word. Theron has The Wonderful World of Evergleam and the Evergleam book. This one in particular walks you through the different fountain ends, bow tie ends, different sides. It, if you want to know everything there is to know about Evergleam, pick this one up. And Merry Christmas.